good, everybody out there on YouTube? This is your man Shattic Stick dropping some hot fraga on this mic. Today we're talking about Sonic Frontiers. This is like the tenth time I've recorded this video for a myriad of reasons. But in today's video, we'll be talking about the interview that Izuka-san had with IGN. They talked about a myriad of subjects relating to Sonic Frontiers and just the Sonic franchise as a whole. But the three major points I want to talk about is them talking about what ultimately made them decide to make an open world game like Sonic Frontiers, the big topic on the docket, which is Izuka-san saying that he would like to make another Sonic Adventure game, and something hopeful for us older fans and how Sega is wanting to approach the franchise going forward by appealing to older and younger fans alike. But before we get into this, make sure you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit that notification bell. We're trying to get to 6,000 subs, and it'd be highly appreciated if you could help out. But with that out of the way, I'll start reading these interview questions, Izuka-san's responses, and giving you my two cents. This is the first question asked by IGN. When did you first get the idea to make an open zone focused Sonic game? Was this something that you brainstormed as an idea before the development of Sonic Frontiers? Izuka-san responds, After completing Sonic Forces, we were brainstorming on what to do next. We realized there's little room for evolution with a traditional 3D Sonic game. We'd only be able to make something that fans have seen before. That's why we, at the very start, we discussed as a team how to change this linear style of gameplay. And this means quite a few things. First of all, I just think Sonic Team is facing fatigue when it comes to ideas. Specifically, probably the old guard more so than anybody else. When you think about 3D Sonic games, they've basically done everything under the sun. At least in terms of what linear platformers are. We've had games that are basically auto runners. Sonic has controlled as a, like a car in about three or four of the games. And in the earlier 3D era, at least for Sonic, most of the games controlled relatively like traditional platformers. There's just nothing really new to touch when it comes to linear style 3D Sonic games, at least in Sonic Team's eyes. And I think that's why they went with the open world style of gameplay. Because on top of it being the one thing they haven't done, it was the next logical step. And on top of being the next logical step, it is the one single thing that fans have wanted for years. I think every Sonic fan at some point or time in their life has wanted an open world Sonic game. It's why every single freaking 3D Sonic fan game tries to make the levels as big as possible or are just tech demos with big rolling hills. Because if Sega's not gonna do it, the Sonic community is gonna definitely try to do it. So I think Sonic Frontiers was that next logical step. But let's talk about the next big thing on the docket, and that's the Sonic Adventure 3 stuff. So IGN asks, with the inclusion of the open zone, it almost feels like we've completed a loop back to the first Sonic Adventure, which also had a very small scale open world. Is visiting the Sonic Adventure game something that interests you, whether in the form of a remaster or a sequel? Izuka-san responds, I've mentioned this in previous interviews, but I would like to continue the Sonic Adventure series. Sonic Adventure also contains smaller open spaces known as the Adventure Fields. I think we've used what we learned with those in this game as well. I haven't thought about my next game yet, but I personally think it'd be nice if we could use what we learn with this game in Sonic Adventure. Now, this actually bodes well for the franchise, and Sonic Adventure 3 is also that fabled game that everybody wants. It's like a Kingdom Hearts 3. But, it, you know, we actually got Kingdom Hearts 3 or a Half-Life 3. It's one of those games that everybody asks for, but never gets for whatever reason it may be. Now, I'd be really excited for them to return to the adventure style of games or just give us a Sonic Adventure 3 in name. One of the things that worries a lot of people is that they want to use Sonic Frontiers ultimately as the base for Sonic Adventure 3. And depending on how Frontiers plans out or comes out, it may be the best option. Many people have wanted the adventure fields or the hub worlds to come back in 3D Sonic games like they were in specifically like Adventure 1. And while I think hub worlds haven't really done well in Sonic games at all, I think if Sonic Frontiers winds up being a good open zone game, that they could definitely use what they've learned from Sonic Frontiers to make the next Sonic Adventure game with those really nice open hub worlds. Because I believe that's what an Adventure 3 deserves. 
As much as I'm opposed to Hub Worlds and Sonic games, it's mostly because in the past they haven't been executed well. But if we get something that's actually decent and adds to the game rather than take away from it or pad out the experience, I think we'll have something great on our hands. And there's also the fact that Sonic Frontiers is obviously use, utilizing new things from like the boost games or even things from Lost World like the parkour. And on top of that, there's a bigger emphasis on combat in a positive way. Don't get me wrong, I am being optimistic, but at the same time, I understand what, why many are concerned about Sonic Frontiers. But I also think we should look at the net positives that we can get from Sonic Frontiers, even if they depart from this general style of gameplay that is the boost style of gameplay. I don't know. I'm just really excited for the fact that Izuka-san wants to make a Sonic Adventure 3, and Sonic Frontiers could possibly be the thing that leads to a Sonic Adventure 3 should it be a good game. I don't know, tell me how you feel about that in that comment section below, I'd really like to know. But let's move on to the last question that really interested me, and this is the question IGN asked. With Sonic being more than 30 years old now, there's not only an audience that has grown up with classic Sonic games from the Genesis and Dreamcast eras, but also a growing audience that's growing up with the movies and more modern Sonic games. How do you try to build to both audiences? And Izuka-san responds, well, Sonic is going to be 31 years old. Sonic fans from 30 years ago are adults now. There are also young fans who may have started with the movies and such. Going forward, we want the Sonic brand to appeal to both groups in its games and other media. Part of that is our June release of Sonic Origins. It's a perfect representation of the origins of Sonic for both fans of old and new. We also plan on creating more games like Sonic Frontiers that will delight 3D Sonic veterans in new ways. Our plan is to target these specific groups of Sonic fans with each of our releases going forward, which tells me quite a few things. First of all, I think they're going to take a step back from the games being super kiddie in tone, which hasn't been something that's really irritated me because it's always been a series targeted at a younger audience. But now that they're targeting an older audience, I'd like some more mature themes and stuff to be explored in Sonic games. They even talk about this in this interview. And while I'm not going to go over that, I will say it's been something that's been asked about. Hopefully they do take that route of making a more mature game to appeal to the older fans. But I also hope this doesn't mean that they're going to nostalgia bait older fans like they have been doing to the classic fans since like 2010, where everything appeals to them and nothing for the fans of the early 2000s or the late 90s stuff. It just feels like there's a huge segment of fans that have been ignored despite, you know, while I do know the early 2000s wasn't the best for Sonic, it also feels like they're ignoring some of the good from that era as, as well. The advanced games have been ignored for years. I just like to see Sonic Team give us stuff that's similar to that era. It also shows how they're approaching things because of how big of a multimedia giant Sonic has become in the past like five years. Like, let's be real, especially since the Sonic movie, Sonic has been making bank in, in merchandise. I know a lot of kids, I've seen a lot of kids probably get into Sonic because of the movie, because their parents who were into Sonic when they were younger were like, oh man, maybe I like, maybe my kid will like Sonic because I liked Sonic growing up. And that's nice to see. I like to see that this is a franchise that can span every age group and demographic, much like something like Pokemon or Mario. There's something for both the new fans and the old fans to enjoy. And that's what Sonic needs to be. Not a nostalgia pandering franchise, but something that does for both. But I don't know. How do you feel about all this in that comment section down below? I'm really excited about Sonic Adventure 3 possibly being a thing. And Izuka-san looking to that after the success of Frontiers. But I don't know. How do you guys feel in that comment section down below? Tell me. But don't forget, this is me, your man, Shattuck Stick. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Share this out with your friends. Follow your boy on Twitter. Keep up to date when I stream, upload anything. And also join the Discord. We've been talking about things in there recently. Also, you'll stay up to date with videos and streams in there as well. But hey, remember, Hot Faraga turns to Cold Blazaga. Chill out some of my other videos. Peace. Have a good one.
See you soon.